Okay guys, welcome back after that short advert break. Now, before I continue with this lesson, I would like to ask you, sit with either your book or a pen, because I want you to do the sums or actually the graphs with me. Okay, so now we'll be looking at line graphs. So what is important when we work with line graphs? I indicated here that line graphs, right? A line graph shows the trend between plotted points of continuous data, okay? What else is important? Points are joined, right, to show the continuous nature of that data. So that is line graph. So let's quickly look at the steps, right, to follow. Okay, so I said here, when we draw line graphs, you draw the two x's, right, and decide which one is the independent variable, right, and place this one on the horizontal axis. To remind you again, remember horizontal axis? There's your horizontal axis. So that's our starting point. Then we indicated step number two. You work out an appropriate scale for the numbers on the axis. Remember, I'm giving you some background now. This we're going to apply once we have a question to do. Then I indicated step number three. You label your axis. Right. Step number four, you plot points on the graph. Step number five, you join the points. Right. So that is the steps I want you to follow. And lastly, give your graph a heading. Remember, it must be an appropriate heading. If your graph is about Soccer World Cup, there's no use you're going to label it, let's say, HIV 2023. You're with me. So it must speak to what your context is all about. Let's look at the next or the first question, right, so I'm saying here, Angela is a young entrepreneur and she sells Vors rolls from a store at the university campus. It costs Angela 1,200 rand per month to hire and run the store. So that's a fixed cost, right? The cost of producing one Vors roll, including labor and ingredients, is 12 rand. One Vors roll is sold at 16 rand. So looking at this, we have our cost and we also have what our income will consist of, right? The table below shows a monthly cost in rent and income of making and selling VORS rolls. So there, and it's always good to note what your table is all about. In this case, I indicated number of um, VORS rolls, so it's 0, 100 up to 700. Then we have our total cost in rent as well, yeah? And then we have our income, right? So meaning, if even if she does not sell any vorsal, a total cost will still be 1,200. Remember, that's for hiring the store and the running of it. Then, obviously, if you don't sell any vorsal, the income will be zero, just to give you an idea. Sometimes we ask you questions based on the table as well. Now, let's go to the next slide. Here I'm saying a line graph of the total income has been drawn on the system of axes below. So there we have the line graph, and this represents the total income, right? On the same set of axes, draw a line graph, okay, to illustrate the total cost. So it's very important to understand what the question is all about. So basically, the total income has been drawn. What is your aim now? On the same set of axes, we have to draw a line graph to illustrate the total cost. So basically, we're going to work with this top one, right? The total cost. So remember, we are going to plot. In this case, I want you to note a heading already provided. We already labeled the x's, right? The amount of rents, that's your, in, your dependent x's, your y axis. So I'll label this as y. This you'll need as we move on. And here, that's your x axis, right? Your independent variable. So now we're basically going to plot according to the number pairs here. So what are number pairs? This is a number pair, 1,200 and 0, for example. Here, 9,600 and 11,200. That is called an ordered number pair. All right? So let's start. So I'm saying here, remember, I'm working with the total cost only. Number of Bura rolls is 0, right? Total cost will be 1,200. So I start at zero for the number of Vors rolls, as you can see there. What should the cost be? 1,200. So I look, if you look clearly, you'll see the intervals on the graph is in 200s. 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. We are looking for 1,400. So there we go. We agree? Okay. So therefore, that will be the first point I'm going to plot. 
zero, voors rows, total cost 1200. The next ordered number pair, if we sell 100 Pure voors rows, what should the total cost be? 2400, so I'm looking at 100, there we go. And then what is the total cost? That's 2400, so there's 2000, 2400 will be there, we agree. Then next up, for selling 200 of these Bure voors rows, so there's 200, where the plot, the dot is showing. 200 voors rows, the total cost will be 3600, so I go 3200, 400, 600. Where does it meet? There. Can you see? So it's like this 200 to go all the way up. Where does it meet? That's where I plot the point. Okay. Then I'll look, be looking at the next one, 300. 300 rows will be, cost will be 4,800. So that is just below 5,000. We agree it's right there. Then 400 of these rows, four rows will be 6,000. So I go 400, 6,000. All right, so let's quickly find the correct point there. It's here. Can you see where they intersect? Then next one is 500, Vors rows, and then that will be a cost of 7,100. So there's 7,000 all the way, 7,100. Then 600 rows will be 8,300. So there's 8,000, okay, so 300 will be in the middle there between 200 and 400, and then our last point here is for 700 rows, which is here, that will be 9,600. So there's 9,600, 246, all the way to that side, so it's there. All right, so since this is a line graph, what do I do now? And I want you to use your ruler doing this right. So we're going to co connect all of these dots. All right, and I'll indicate this with an arrow because it can happen that you will sell more than the 700 rows. So clearly, please note that this will be our cost graph and we label it appropriately. Guys, I hope that is clear to all of you. Okay, let us look at the next one. That's a broken line graph. So I indicated here broken line graphs. What is important with broken line graphs? A broken line graph shows the trend between plotted points of discrete data. Remember when we work with line graphs, we work with continuous data, now we work with discrete data. The points are not joined to show the discrete nature of the data. Now let's look at what is given to us. It says here, the table below shows the number and percentages of children from three age groups who did not attend any South African educational institution from 2002 to 2009. So there is your table. Can you see it is grouped according to the different age groups, 7 to 15, 16 to 18, okay, and 7 to 18. So also important here, we have our years. Remember, get familiar with the table first, right? So what is the question? It says, draw a broken line graph on the answer sheet that's on the next slide to represent the percentage of children Right, important percentage of children in the age group 16 to 18 not attending any of the institution from 2009 to or 2002 to 2009. So basically we're working with this age group, right? And also important, we work with the percentage, as it indicates, represent the percentage of children, not the number of children, right? Now let's look at what is presented. So here's our next slide. What needs to happen now? We have to look at age group 16 to 18. And again, for the sake of time, I indicated the heading already. I labeled the two X's as well. So remember, we work with ordered number pairs. Okay, so in this case, our ordered number pairs will be the years and the percentages. You agree with me, right? So let's plot them. So we are saying in the year 2002, 17,6% of children between 16 and 18 did not attend any formal schooling. That's basically what we are saying. So let's plot that point. 2002 is here. We agree. Then, if you look at this, let's find out first what our intervals are. So it's 10, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3. Point, can you see? It's 0.1. So therefore, I'm looking for 17.6. 17.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.19, 0 0.20, 0 
that will be the first point for 2002. Moving now to 2003, we are saying it is 17,2. So there for 2003, let's look for 17.2. So there's 17.1.2. Are we fine? 2004, it was 17.3. So 2004, 17 is there. 1, 2, there's 17.3. Then 2005, can you see I'm plotting all the points now? 2005, it was 17.8. So there is 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 is there, just below 17.9. Then 2006, it was 17.5. 2006 is here. We go to 17.5. So there is 17 again. Right, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then in 2007, it was 14.8. So now I go down, there's 14, right? 14.8 will be just below, so I move all the way down. Okay, just bear with me. Okay, I'm at 2007. So that will give us... Actually, that one there. And then 2008, it was 16.2. So there is 16, we agree. 16.2 will be, yeah, 16.2. And then lastly, 2009, it was 16.7. 16.7. So it's 16. Point, I'm going to go here, and I'll go 3 down. 16.7. So I've plotted all the points, so remember... With a broken line graph, we don't use straight lines to connect it, right? So therefore, I'll indicate it with this broken line, right? So I move all the way down to 2007. And there we have our broken line graph. Guys, let us quickly take a short break. After the break, we'll continue with more graphs. See you now.